Hi, my name is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers and the Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group. This is video nine in our series, Wizard School, and um, we're using the Victoria Designs kit called Wizard School, hence the name. Um, the um, kit is not available anymore as far as I can tell. I went and checked to see. Um, I've got this whole backlog of Victoria Design kits, and um, a lot of times when they release a mega kit like this, um, I will get it at 70% off, yay, and um, then, you know, they won't have it anymore. So, um, that's that. So, we left off, we had made the cover, and this is our front, and we're going to put a spine image on, so it's alright about the seam, which I almost forgot to cut the uh, covers out the images out uh, for the insides and the spine. I don't know what I was thinking, but remember we were talking about um, cutting out the images according to this and not according to the um, half of the eight and a half by 11. And um, this worked out of course to eight and a half. Oh no, it didn't. This is the corner of the 11 inch side. And um, so, I like this image better. I changed it because I think there's more going on. Plus, it's got the wizard school on there and, um, you know, the books and the hat and all that. So, I like that. And I changed the back image as well to this. It's got the student in the corner. So, I like that. And I cut these both like this. And then I trimmed this side off and this side off. And that way I was able to keep this and keep this, you know, and I didn't have to worry about centering it. So, I decided that was enough of that. I've already got so many extra pages printed. I was bound and determined I was not going to print anymore. This is our outer and inner spines. So, this is going to be our outer spine, which I think will work out nicely. And then this is our inner covers, which I like because it looks like the marbled or whatever. And I cut them, obviously, out of two pieces of paper. And I did the same corner. So uh, when I put them in the book, they will be exactly the same. I labeled them top on the back. Okay, so I guess that's it for that. Now, when we left off, um, we had glued these on. Uh, this one is a little bit farther away than the other one I noticed. And this one over here is going to be a little bit of a bear where we, you know, cut it off. The thinner your cardstock, I think, or your the, your chipboard, I finally remembered what it was called, so I wrote it on there. Um, the harder I feel like it is to bend it over because it's kind of wobbly. Okay, so let's glue this down. Let's glue this bad boy down. We're going to want to kind of tell it where we want it to go. And I think this is a little bit crooked, so we'll have to see how that works out. You know, I may have to make another cover off camera, um, depending on how it turns out. So we're gonna run glue. Wait for the glue. Always waiting for the glue. We're going to run some right along the edge here. If you've done a book cover before, you can probably skip this entire video and go right on to the flip through, which is the next video. Um, I'm just being honest with you. They're pretty much the same. Unless you're doing something, you know, different on purpose, but just a basic cover is the same. And we want to get glue all in here. You definitely want your edges to stick. Try 
try not to get it all over your work surface. Mine's glass. I can just wipe it off before it dries, but um, depending on your situation, that may not be the case. Okay, I'm just going to stand it up and flip it over. We're going to do all four sides like this. Make sure your hands are clean when you're doing this, too. If you hear that crackling noise, then it probably isn't stuck down. We're going to put gold corners on. And I am going to use the crocodile to make the holes because of my hands. I get tired of saying that because of my hands. Um, but I don't have any eyelets left, any gold ones. So I'm going to sew it on. I didn't put glue in there. I meant to put it all the way. We're going to take our bone folder, lay it flat, and mush it down where you're going to want it to fold, which is in between the, the two pieces. And these two are definitely closer together. it a little funky so let's get that off. I want to get dirt or dirty glue on this part of my cover which I think I did a little bit. Of course this part down here is going to be covered by our inner spine. Now a note um, the inner spine should be eight and a half, even though this is nine. We want it to be the same as the uh, book height. At least that's the way I do it. We're going to go to the other long side and give it a bend. You have to be a little careful around the seam. down there. This time I'm going to put glue down in here. his hair is stuck in there just for good measure. Actually, the thicker you put this on, the longer it will stay wet. Obviously, that was kind of a dumb statement, but if you feel like you need a little extra time, you can put the glue on a little bit heavier. I'm just saying. Okay, we've got it trained to bend. This 
these are just little rolled up pieces of glue. If you hit one on there that you can't pick up, just use your glue eraser on it. That area is going to be covered, but still. Okay, now we're going to do the ends. Oops. Now we're going to do this part. <laughs> so we make sure it's all stuck down. And we need to do this middle part right here. It's a little hard to see on cream colored paper. And I guess with it being a wizard school, there's a way to make it look like leather. And maybe I'll make a video on that. Not this paper, but another, another type of paper. Namely paper towels. <laughs> there you go. This is the step I am the worst about remembering. That and if the corner's too big, kind of tucking it in. But since I've started using book corners, I'm not quite as conscious of it. What is the deal? When I was doing my lap book, it was nearly impossible. Look at, I got that in ink. It's a good thing the cover's going to cover that. I thought I had all the ink off my countertop. My workspace area. Probably do now. I got lucky with that spot right there. This end is going to be a little more dicey because it's kind of short. I'm hoping with our inside covers we don't run into trouble. We'll do our center inside cover first. You're going to want it to go an inch and a half to two inches wider than your spine and your um, gap. Don't forget to figure that in. Well, being shorter makes it easier to get it to the edge using this method. Makes it a little easier to go off the edge too. find the shorter it is, the harder it is to get it to lay flat. And you would think it would be the other way around, but it has more tension to pull it up. That's a, just my guess.
Yeah, I think we're going to be all right. There's enough on the corners. Not the very best corners. We're going to cover them. I mean, they're fine, but... um. This one looked a little loose still. In fact, this whole side looks a little loose still. We're going to go around the edge and flatten it. Makes it look better. And just go along it with your bone folder. Gets those wrinkly uh, look out. Be careful at your seam. When you fold your book up for the first time, when you're folding it together, um, wait till you get everything glued in, first of all. Um, that way you don't have to try to glue in places that are already folded. Okay, so we got that done. So now we need to put the center inner spine and I think I'm going to put the outer spines on while it's flat this is a little wide I think I'm going to See, it's there. I want to go at least out to there. Okay, this is the side we have up on the others. Now I'm making all three the same. You can put decorative paper in the center if you want. And I almost used another piece of this. I have this and I could have used this but it would have cut off our owl bottom <laughs> our owl butt so I decided not to okay. so the first thing we're going to do so we're going to glue this part. Make sure you glue this part really well. You don't want it when you fold it. You don't want the paper to bubble up. I've had that happen before. And it will make you cry. Just do up to here. But definitely do down in here. You'll get the rest of that when you glue the piece on, but it, the glue doesn't go all the way up to the top. So I just do in here, and then I let the paper glue glue the rest of the seam.
and I know it sounds like I'm just scraping this on here, which I mean I am, but I have it tilted to the side so more glue comes out. Okay, we're going to set this to the side. I'll be quick about it. What did I say? This. This is going to be our back. No, this is the side I inked. This is going to be our front. smell at six o'clock in the morning. I got a little bit of a late start recording this morning because I was uploading the Let It Snow lamp book tutorial part three to YouTube and um, I probably could have filmed this while it was uploading but um, it took a little bit longer than I thought to upload it, which still would have made it better for recording this during that time, but um, I decided to go ahead and it's the third of the month, so I decided to go ahead and pay my bills instead, which was probably time well spent. Okay. So now we're going to put this down, and we're not going to put it all the way to the top or the bottom. We're going to leave a little bit of a gap. Mm. That's more of a gap than I meant to leave. But to make it more even on either side. You want to make it straight. You want to take your bone folder and go where you're Where your fold is and get that paper down in that glue you put on. Remembering not to use the point. And the other two were easy. I mean this one wasn't hard but I'm just saying it is a little difficult to see that sometimes. This line and this marbled paper makes it a little more a little more iffy. this fold is a little bit wider the gap hopefully it won't make it too loosey-goosey okay now we're going to do the two inside covers and I wrote top on the inside that we're going to the part where we're adding the glue so that I knew um, where the top was. Now with this I only inked this little area right across here 
I didn't ink it all the way around because we're going to be covering it. And I try to do this carefully, you know, um, some people may be able to do it quicker. I'm talking at the same time as well. Well, most of the time. And you don't need near as much on this paper as you did on the spine. Just a little bit will do like when we put the cover on just enough to keep it from possibly um, gapping up a little bit. Okay, top goes at the top. We're going to line it up with this paper. Slide it in just a little bit more. Let's slide it back up. It's cutting it really close. Well, the middle's already grabbed. That's the only thing about not putting a whole lot in the middle is it will grab a lot quicker. Let's do this one. Now, in most cases, after doing this, I would um, not put the covers on until after. But um, I think this time I will try to put them on while it's flat. We'll see how that goes. Like I said, the worst that can happen is I have to make another cover off camera. Now, if you want this to blend in more, I guess you could go without inking it, but we've inked everything else, so I think it would be more consistent to ink these as well. They don't have to be inked super dark. Just enough that you see right here. I think in putting extra glue and putting it in the center would probably do it. That way we can move it around a little bit more. I'm going to put this on. It's going to be close to the edge. We want to move it even with this other paper. And we want it to be even this way. Like I said, that's a little bit farther over than what I would want it to be. Um, so it looks like I cut them just a smidge wide. But it's still all right. This fold is right here. Okay, 
So that's going to be our inside cover. So let's flip it over. Yeah, it's pretty hard to see. Let's go ahead and fold it. You don't need to fold it past 90 degrees, which I did just a little bit just then after I said you don't need to. <laughs> I think I'm going to run the bone folder down here just one more time so it really knows what's what. Especially at the top and the bottom. Okay. I feel like this is going to be too wide but I always feel like when you look down from the top and you've got the two little skinny edges of the spine sewn in, even though the other edge is big, I always feel like it's the spine is too big. Okay, so um, we, we need to put the spine cover on. before we pun punch any holes. So let's do that. I cut a whole new stack of one by one squares to make notes on. Okay. Wow, that's really hard to see. everything cleaned off. I think it's easier to get them lined up. I think it will be once if we do it while they're flat like we do the inside covers. So on the covers, we kind of throw my rule out the window because I have had, you know, a cover buckle before. Never had that happen on the inside. But there's so much stress in folding. Um, okay. So the seam isn't quite in the middle. Make sure whichever way your inside is, your outside cover is the same. See, these are a little bit taller. I think that's going to fit on there nice versus making it the same size as the um, I don't know. That's straight and I like it. I don't think I'm going to try to move it over a little bit. I think I'm going to leave it where it is. Okay, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and glue the front ones on. Nice and flat. The covers aren't going to go in any different of a spot. All right, this is going to be the front cover. This is going to be the back cover. So let's do our back cover first. Let's.
and I'm probably going to, instead of making a double knot in the center when I get done doing my three hole pamphlet stitch, I'll probably use a bow. Then when I get some more eyelets in, then I can untie it and take it out and put the eyelets in and it'll look better. Even though our image, because it's so busy, is going to uh, help hide them, at least on the bottom. But um, since I can't sew through cardstock or anything anymore, I mean chipboard anymore, I don't really have a choice but to do it the way I've been forced to do it. I could use elastics. Once I put the center hole in, though, then that kind of knocks that out of the park. So, and we didn't make the cover tall enough. You have to add an extra little bit if you're going to do the elastics because of, um, oh, there we go. Let's get some more on there. Oh, my eyes are water. And normally this doesn't bother me, but this is an awful lot of this glue. This is the top. That by default makes this the top. Remember, you've got your castle at the bottom. You want to line that up with that. By Joe, I think we've got it. I may do this this way forever. You might want to do this in towards the center so you don't have any seepage out the edges. Still hearing a little bit of crinkling down here. And I found that if your Fabri-Tac is still cold, it's not dry. It's not room temperature. I don't know if that's why they don't ship it in the winter or not. Yeah, see that's going to be off just a little bit. But I think we're going to sew our two signatures right where these keys are and go straight down. And I've got this grayish brown thread. Hmm. I may switch that to a dark brown. There was just quite a bit of the blue. I think I'm going to go with the dark brown. And we're on to our last piece. Yay! And the one good thing about the inside covers being like this is it's easy to see where you mark with a pencil. So, with this being two and a half, then one and a quarter is going to be the center. And so that means five eighths, I believe, works out to be halfway between those. So we'll go in five eighths from each side and make our dots.
and make it sure it's a, make it sure it's a right side up. It's terrible. It was terrible that I said it, and it was terrible how I said it. Another advantage of this is I don't have to write anything on the front. just spreads the glue out. Okay, so we've got our spine and um, so now we're going to measure the center just for reference. So we're going to come um, an inch down. Yes, an inch down from the top of the paper. And we want to zero it out. And then one, two. So I'm going to zero this out, which will give me the center. So that's going to be the center, five and a half on that side and seven and a half on the other, which gives us our two and a half. I'm going to make a dot here because this is for reference. Um, then I'm going to go, now I don't like to necessarily do it center, 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 you know. I kind of like doing it a little bit up. So This is going to be our center. And we're going to draw a light line down. Isn't a little crooked. Hmm. The whole thing seems crooked. Could be the paper. So now we have a reference line. So let's go out. Three quarters of an inch, three, four and a half, yep, one, two, three quarters of an inch. Only doing two signatures, one, two, three quarters of an inch. Yeah, that's a lot of space. It doesn't seem like a lot of space over here. What if I do a half an inch out? That's not far enough. We'll go 
down about an inch. Let's do it this way. And we can put the edge of the ruler along the edge of the paper and then that'll be an inch. And now that these are straight, we can draw a light line down. That seems good. It's really hard to tell because the paper's crooked. two points in the line to draw the straight line. This one's definitely crooked. There's a seam right there, so I'm going to run this Normally this doesn't take this long, but I put the paper on a little bit crooked the seam Yeah, so that one's in the right spot I can't believe I'm having so much trouble drawing a straight line. There we go. smidge because I'm going to be punching the hole in the center. Well, it's not like I haven't made crooked spines before. It's not very encouraging, is it? I'm going to put the crocodile on the smaller hole. I'm 
kind of get out my dark brown. I ordered this set of dark embroidery floss from Amazon. I think I want to check it against the front cover. How about this color? Hmm. That's interesting. Kind of like that. I think it'll blend in more. I've used that color before. But anyway, I got it on Amazon. And I think it was only about $10. And you get three sets of like four colors, I believe. So it's a pretty good deal. At first, they thought they were all different, supposed to be different colors. And I was desperately trying to sort them out <laughs> in order. <laughs> Oops. Let's see. Where is our end? I don't see the end. All right. I do three lengths and a smidge. So there's one, two, three lengths and a smidge. And then the needle I use is blunt and I've got all these needles in here and there's two of them very close to the same size so I put the one I normally use in here upside down so I know which one it is that would be this one sewing with embroidery floss helps fill in the hole with the end fraying. There we go. And normally I sew off camera because I am so bad at it. I don't know what I did. There we go. Somehow I have a kink. Oh, it's because I missed two threads. This is why I don't normally sew on camera. It's so hard for me. Okay. Let's do the holes. I guess that's a good thing that I did the little extra, huh? 
we're just going to take the crocodile and we're going to move this side back and we're going to line this up This one's a little bit off this way, but it's right in the castle area, so hopefully it won't be that noticeable. Be in the oh no, it's the other way around. I do wish I had put them in just a little bit further. Okay, so now we have to put the holes in the signatures. So you just make a mark where the hole is. I need to clip them. I'm going to do this temporarily. I might. No. Okay, so let me get this in here as far as it's going to go. And we'll open it to the center. usually clip one at the top so it doesn't move up and down and then I clip one on the side and then I double check okay then you have to open it this way because here are your marks okay at an hour so I'm going to make the holes and then I'm going to put you on pause and see if I can get that threaded this you want to make sure to get it on the fold all right so we're going to want to do that on the other one but we can do it after okay let me uh, put you on hold and I'll see if I can get this threaded that ate up a bunch of our time Okay, all right, I'll be right back. I had the wrong needle. Apparently two of them were turned up on the inside. So 
that wasn't going to work. You know, I think I'll mark and do the holes on the other one. Okay, let's get it pushed in. Push down. Get it all lined up. I'm gonna mark the holes. Now, this is signature two. So it looks like I made the holes on that one the wrong lineup. But they're very, very close. So. center. Make sure everything is still together. Clip this one at the top. Clip this one on the side. These are for potato chips. These are potato chip clips. <laughs> I like them because they're big and they're, you know, some people may not like them that big you know, they want them flatter, but I don't mind. So let's flip it over. And let's make it three holes. And I'm only going to sew one in. And it makes it easier to line up the holes this way as well. So we're going to go out the center. erase those lines. <laughs> and you could still, at this point, if you wanted to, you could still put a stripe of, like a decorative stripe up the middle. You could even do it once you put the signatures in too. Maybe toss a pencil holder in the middle. See if I can get that lined up so easily again. Make sure this is the front cover and that it's right side up. We've sewn them in upside down before. And you can hear the glass, you know you're lined up. Out, uh, out the bottom. Back in through the top. Okay. 
you want to leave enough that you can tie down through the bottom. Then back in through the center and try not to split the line. You want to pull it tight. That looks very uneven top to bottom. It shouldn't be, but it kind of looks like it. You want to come in on the other side of the thread. And we want to pull everything tight. Now normally, you would tie this in a knot, I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I know what I can do. I can go ahead and tie the knot. And then um, I can cut the thread. So that's all there is to it. Out the center, in the top, all the way down out the bottom, in the center, tie a knot. That's it. So I'm going to leave this for right now hanging out down here. I'm going to take her clips off. She says confidently. And then that's your signature sewn in. Oops. Yes, this is why we made the cover a little extra extra. So that's our book right there. And then we'll do the other half and the book will be done. Okay? All right. So that's it for this video. And I will see you in the next video, which is going to be the flip through. Everything's done except for sewing this side in. And um, we've already gone 10 minutes past an hour and another 10 minutes watching me sew this silly thing in when it's exactly the same as this one, I think is kind of a moot point and um, a waste of your time. So um, like I said, I will see you in the next video and that'll be the flip through and that'll be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay, bye-bye.